They arise from misconception and lack of an understanding of a real situation. Let me explain. Under one country's systems, Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy. Fundamental rights and freedoms are all guaranteed by the basic law. We are firmly committed to protecting press freedom. We do not exercise any censorship. On the recent work visa extension case, we will not comment on any specific decision on our immigration control. All such decisions are made by immigration authorities under the laws and prevailing policies having regard to individual circumstances of each case. Any concerns that Hong Kong's freedom of speech and of the press is under threat are totally groundless. On the contrary, we maintain an environment conducive to the operation of a free and active press. Some 80 foreign media organizations operate in Hong Kong and rigorously perform their role <coughs> as a watchdog. As for the eligibility for running in the Legislative Council election, upholding the basic law and swearing allegiance to the Hong Kong SAR is a basic legal duty of a legislator. One cannot do so if one promotes Hong Kong independence or self-determination or advocates independence as an option. This run counter to the constitutional legal status of Hong Kong SAR. Article 1 of the Basic Law stipulates that the Hong Kong SAR is an inalienable part of the People's Republic of China. It is our duty to safeguard our country's sovereignty, security, and development interests. On speculation of authorities of other jurisdictions taking enforcement action in Hong Kong, our police have investigated and found no evidence in support of such claims. On the decision to ban an organization under the society's ordinance, as an appeal has been lodged, we will not comment further. But let me stress that Hong Kong people do enjoy freedom of association and expression, but like any other jurisdiction, such freedom is not absolute. The ICCPR provides restrictions may be imposed by law if it is necessary to protect national security or public safety, public order or the rights and freedoms of others. This is mirrored in the Hong Kong Bill of Rights. On the misunderstanding that some protesters were targeted for exercising their civil rights, I must clarify that these protesters were convicted not because of their big beliefs or their exercising civil rights, but because of their disorderly or violent conduct in breach of the law. They have crossed the line separating the lawful exercise of constitutional rights from unlawful activities subject to sanctions. I must say that the number of public meetings and processions in Hong Kong last year was 10 times over 1997, and the overwhelming majority of these activities were orderly and peaceful. This demonstrates that freedom of peaceful assembly is fully respected. On interpretation of the basic law, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress has the ultimate authority to do so under Article 158 of the basic law. This is part of a constitutional order. Our Court of Final Appeal agrees that the Standing Committee's interpretation is valid and binding on our courts. As for Article 104 related oath-taking when assuming specified public offices, the Standing Committee's interpretation simply explains clearly the meaning of that article without changing its content. Since the establishment of the Hong Kong Special Military Region in 1997, Hong Kong has remained the world's freest economy, a vibrant international financial business center, a thriving logistics and tourist hub, as well as one of the safest cities in the world. We are committed to building a caring and fair Hong Kong with the government investing heavily in education, medical services, welfare, infrastructure, poverty alleviation, and helping the ethnic minorities. These remarkable achievements are underpinned by our core values and unique institutional strengths which make Hong Kong tick. Hong Kong will continue to forge ahead as Asia's world city with openness, inclusiveness, and diversity under the successful, innovative, and well-tried one-country systems.